and it's powering on the game and we are doing uh, the swordless legend of zelda uh, so right away you can see us using a screen wrap glitch um, which enables Link uh, with a single controller press actually to skip a trigger that scrolls the screen and lets him go out of bounds so he can uh, take major shortcuts that way. And uh, you can see we're heading into level two. Uh, this swordless route is uh, different from the previous very significantly uh, when I was a kid and probably a lot of people uh, would do swordless uh, by trying to immediately get money uh, to buy either bombs or uh, some sort of weapon. And um, But this room here actually has a bomb uh, that you can just walk to without killing anything. So up until that moment, uh, we are actually not able to harm anybody. Uh, but now, luckily, uh, we have bombs and are able to continue, uh, continue getting them uh, by manipulating item drops. Uh, so now we have a full complement of bombs, which, of course, given we're not using the sword, uh, is... Um, is gonna be the main way that we're gonna do damage. Let me just adjust something here real quick. Okay, so uh, now into the money-making game, which of course, this being a task, we're able to use the random number generator, which is purely frame-based, and um, take certain delays and go into uh, the cave with the right timing to get the ideal amount of money in the quickest amount of time. Uh, so now that we have some money, we're headed off to level three, uh, and we're gonna get the raft first, uh, killing enemies there to manipulate later item drops. And uh, unlike the regular route of this game, we need some extra keys. Uh, so we normally wouldn't have uh, gone up to kill those uh, gel creatures, uh, but went a little bit out of the way to get an extra key. And now this one as well. And we're headed for the raft. Okay, just going to try and get the audio back one moment here. All right, so now, uh, and we just did a reset, which is a um, controller two input to skip back to the beginning of a level. Uh, and that's just faster than walking back after we get the raft. Okay, and now uh, you can see with how we kill this boss, um, an enemy behavior can really be manipulated in this game to get them to move where you want. Uh, to kill the manhandler with a single bomb very quickly. Um, and 
that's definitely a big part of the uh, task strats in this game is manipulating enemy behavior uh, for the fastest possible kills to leave the correct items in the correct places. And now we're headed into level four, home of the ladder. And uh, those, I forget what, uh, I think they're Vyres, the jumping bat creatures. Uh, very difficult, unfortunately, to manipula manipulate them out of your way sometimes. Uh, so in that one case, I had to walk around them. Uh, and of course, being an ass or even RTA, you have to be able to navigate these rooms uh, without lighting them up. Um, there is a one bomb kill for this room uh, that's used in the non-swordless strat, but for the swordless, the RNG was such that it was quicker to use two bombs. So this is actually not done in the regular run, uh, but a very well-known, uh, not sure if it's a glitch or feature, but it was known since the original days of the game, uh, re-entering level one, um, makes the locked door in that first room disappear. And that's important for this run since keys are at a premium. So we're off to get the bow. You'll notice we have a nice round number of money at this point, which has been uh, important for a lot of the enemies uh, getting the blue five rupee cash drops um, is a big part of the decision making for how many enemies to kill in which room. And so we now actually have enough money to make the purchases for after we finish this level. get some items other than just our bombs. So with the screen wrap, we can actually go this way, get to level six, and there's a couple of shops on the way. Of course, we'll need the meat in level seven. Need the arrows for level six is where we're headed next. And you can't actually see it, but we're going to grab the power bracelet there, which we'll save a second later on, just uh, getting over to level five. And so we use a secret entrance to this level, which actually doesn't save time getting into the level. Uh, but after we leave the level, that will save an animation where Link is climbing back up the stairs, and that saves a little under a second. Rooms like that with all those bats uh, were a little bit challenging uh, swordless since you have to use bombs and the bats are only kind of limited in how much you can manipulate them. 
Um, whereas a lot of the other enemies like Dark Nuts, you can pretty much use the RNG to get them to move wherever you want. And the main way to manipulate the enemy movements in this game is, uh, apart from moving Link in certain directions, uh, is just to pause and unpause the game so that uh, when each enemy reaches their decision point of where to move next, uh, they'll hopefully uh, zig instead of zagging and uh, go where you want them to. Uh, so the wand is not picked up in the regular version of this game, uh, and it's actually needed for swordless completion uh, because it's able to damage uh, some of the bosses and mini bosses that uh, otherwise would require the sword to kill, so bombs uh, don't affect them. And fortunately, uh, we'll see, especially in level 5, uh, having the wand equipped can make for some uh, interesting variety in how to clear some of the screens. Yet another key there. And we're ready to use our precious arrow there. Grab the heart container. Um, we don't usually grab the heart containers during uh, the task uh, because it's actually uh, a little bit painful, even though you can gain time through damage boosts. Uh, you have to finish each level with full hearts or you lose time while it refills. Um, and so here we have Power Blaze Bracelet just warping us. And uh, in this case though, there are some damage boosts like with those Tektites there that are pretty cheap and wound up being beneficial. Uh, we use another secret entrance there for the same reason as for level six. And now level five, I definitely remember from my childhood uh, trying to struggle with these screens uh, to get past these dark nuts here. Uh, fortunately, uh, with the same glitch that wound up uh, making screen wrapping possible, lets you walk into blocks and uh, just skip straight to the staircases. Um, doesn't prevent us from having to kill the dark nuts to move blocks, but fortunately by saves and um, the uh, clearing these rooms is very different with the wand versus with bombs uh, and uh, or if you have the sword actually you'd still be mainly using bombs to get through them uh, because mummies, uh, the uh, mummy creatures have quite a lot of hit points. Uh, this room actually is the most dramatically difficult um, to clear with bombs because of how spread out the enemies are. Uh, but fortunately, the wand is a distant weapon and uh, does the same amount of damage as the white sword. Um, and actually, uh, you can hit enemies with both the... Um, with the wand itself, as well as the blast. Uh, and if you time it, you can hit one enemy uh, twice on the same frame and get double damage, which uh, was used to uh, save some hits and enemy invulnerability periods uh, throughout that level. And now uh, we're headed back to level four. As you recall, we are actually here before to get the ladder, um, but now we need to go back uh, because we couldn't beat the boss uh, earlier without a sword. Uh, we now do have the wand though. And uh, 
of course, w one of the uh, biggest ways to save time in these runs is eliminating changing between items. Uh, it takes about two seconds to go to the start screen, switch items, and come back again. Uh, and so a common strategy throughout um, recent tasks of this game is to uh, try and eliminate one of those extra item swaps uh, using the start menu by running out of bombs and planning things out so that you'll get the correct item uh, when you run, run out of bombs. In this case, that's one of my favorite bomb kills there. Uh, we're now swapped to the wand because we ran out of bombs, but then uh, we got bombs back again uh, from an item drop. Um, since uh, with swordless, it's uh, pretty much gonna be a run killer if you're ever out of bombs without an immediate way to quickly get them back. Just wasting bombs there, again, to set up a later item swap. Now we're on the wand again. I think level 7 is my favorite level. Because of uh, interesting fights and paths through rooms and a lot of manipulation and item strategy. You still have to do an item swap for the meat, which is unfortunate, but it's only used that one place in the game, so I guess that's fair. And then um, you may notice we don't actually have the blue candle, which is purchased in the uh, regular run, uh, but um, because of the details of how we cover the levels in this run uh, and somewhat uh, the way that we need to get money, it's actually faster to go right down there, grab the red candle, and uh, also um, we're doing level eight pretty late, uh, so it hasn't hurt us so far to not have a candle so far, the candle being needed to get into level eight. So uh, the wall masters actually, um, there's really no rush to kill them because they, they spawn pretty slowly, I think every second or two. And there's not really much you can do to manipulate that. So you just have to stay along the wall, let them spawn, and then um, kill them at the first opportunity, which is done. Uh, considering the complexity of this level, it's, I always thought it was a little bit weak that they just reused uh, Aqu Aquamentus, that boss there, but uh, oh well. No game is perfect. And uh, yeah, I saw some mention in the chat about just the item manipulation. Uh, so there are a few different ways that that's done. Um, so each, item, each enemy is of a certain type will uh, give certain items uh, and uh, and so depending on how many enemies you killed uh, there's a counter that circulates on uh, which items gonna drop this is a nice little off-screen entrance into level 8 uh, but you can get special upgrade items either bombs or blue rupees or fairies by killing certain numbers of enemies either 10 or 16 in a row uh, without taking any damage and so that's used throughout the uh, run, uh, often to get bombs, but also the blue rupees, which um, greatly uh, early, earlier in the run is, uh, and, is and for the um, regular tasks especially, is uh, key for um, amping up uh, how, how quickly Link can earn rupees. Okay, 
now um, could not be able to kill the boss here without the wand. Hence the swap there. Uh, much faster than in the regular task with the wand rather than the wooden sword. And you saw there on the start menu, we've got the full Triforce. Uh, so we are actually going to grab the sword here, uh, which uh, at times there's a lot of discussion over what the proper way to uh, quote, end or finish a swordless run is. Um, there's no way to actually beat the final boss without using the sword, uh, at least no way that's ever been found other than uh, a game end glitch on the Japanese version. And uh, so the consensus has basically been uh, uh, don't grab the sword until you have the full Triforce and uh, carry the sword with you through level 9, but don't use it until you get to Ganon. And so that's what we'll do here. Uh, damage boosts up those uh, stairs are quite beneficial because travel on the stairs is slow. We do that every chance that's possible in the overworld. And okay, no old man there to stop us. And here we go. Okay, so getting another key there. So this room is actually rather tedious because you really need to manipulate those like likes out of your way. Um, and if they don't want to get out of your way, then uh, there's there's not really an easy, non-time-consuming way to get around them. the silver arrow room. And uh, so we actually took a little damage boost to pop through a block there. That's an odd little glitch where um, that moving block actually ceases becoming a part of the landscape and turns into a sprite while it's in motion. And uh, so the game doesn't check for uh, bounds detection uh, when you're damage boosting. Uh, so you're able to pop through there. So we're going to be wasting all our bombs here. Got one last item swap to accomplish, uh, or automatic item swap. We will have to switch to the silver arrow also later. Uh, so Patra, uh, you do actually have to hit each individual one of those uh, mini Patras, uh, and uh, which makes that fight extremely intricate, especially the sword version. The wand one's a little easier. Um, and uh, so I do just let Ganon go back and forth here. Uh, it uses an extra frame uh, each time you do that, but it's uh, a little more entertaining, I thought, than just uh, freezing him in place. 
And there we go. All right, that's Legend of Zelda Swordless Challenge. Um, Thank you for watching. I was very uh, excited a few years ago to make both the regular tasks of this game and the swordless. Uh, the the regular task for this game was the first task that I ever saw on Slashdot, uh, probably way back in like 2004 or 2005, and I uh, didn't start doing tasks myself for another few years. But uh, but I saw the movie and. Um, with some of the strategies, damage boosting, etc., and uh, be interesting to go back and rewatch it uh, since so much has been discovered since then.